and welcome back to Football Made Simple. Bayern Munich have been a team transformed since Hansi Flick came in. Having been promoted from assistant manager to full manager after a turbulent period under Niko Kovac, Bayern went on to win the treble in 1920. And thanks to Flick's intelligent tactics and marvellous man management, this season they have already matched their trophy count, adding the DFL Super Cup, the UEFA Super Cup and the Club World Cup to their cabinet. But what tactics has Flick used this season? Let's take a closer look. Although Flick has proved himself to be a good tactician, his man management has to be mentioned. Having been the assistant manager at a successful 2014 World Cup campaign, Flick already had the trust of many players who were part of the setup. Many of these were senior players, including Muller, Neuer and Boateng, who may not have had the brightest view of Kovac. Flick reinstated them and they became crucial cogs once again. In addition, he gave Joshua Kimmich his preferred defensive midfield role full time, completing his transition from right back. Further to this, he also showed his ability to put trust in young players, overseeing Davis's transition from a sporadically appearing youngster who made 14 appearances, most of them as a winger, to instead becoming one of the best left backs in the world, appearing there 58 times already. And to accommodate this, he has maximized the versatility of Alaba, moving him from being one of the world's best left backs to one of the best centre backs instead. All of this served to create harmony within the squad, and it's meant that in the league, his preferred formation has looked like this, with all of the aforementioned players being key cogs. So how has this affected their tactics? The beauty of Flick's Bayern is their versatility. This means that from deeper areas, if they are under heavy pressure, they can look to go longer from Neuer or the centre-backs, due to both Lewandowski and Müller making great aerial targets and Sane, Nabri and Koeman being willing runners in behind. However, Bayern are still very much a possession-focused side, ranking third in the league with 58% possession. This is facilitated by Bayern being so good in the build-up regardless that opponents prefer to sit deeper to compact the space in crucial zones instead. And by having two ball-playing centre-backs who are comfortable under pressure, it means we less often see Kimmich dropping deeper to support, and instead, he stays higher up providing an option between the lines. Instead, if Bayern are being pressed higher, Pavard often drops from right-back to a right centre-back position as despite being left-footed, Sane hugs the touchline in the first phase providing width. This could then possibly draw an opposition winger higher, leaving Sane with a potential 1 vs 1 from where he can be lethal. And Boateng has the primary responsibility of looking to expand the play with longer balls, normally into one of the wingers when they start high and wide, with his 9.3 long balls per 90 being slightly more than Alaba's. David Alaba on the other hand plays the ball slightly more into feet often looking to connect with men near him. However, unlike the right where Sane provides the width, Serge Gnabry and Coman both tend to tuck infield early, with Davis instead having to move higher to do so instead. This then potentially leaves him free to receive a switch from Boateng. And here we see the beauty of Kimmich not having to drop into the centre-back zone to help the build-up, as well as Alaba's best trait. By Kimmich staying as the pivot, it allows his partner in crime Goreska to push higher up between the lines. If the opponent continues to try and press high and potentially commit a man to Kimmich, you have Alaba, one of the best ball playing centre backs around, playing penetrative, progressive passes into the men between the lines, and he has three different options to do this. So despite playing so deep, he has the second most passes into the final third, as well as the third most progressive passes for the team. So, naturally, opposition midfielders begin to drop deeper to try and cope with this, but this then opens up a new problem as Kimmich is now afforded more space. And special mention must be made of Kimmich, who is possibly the best midfielder in the world and certainly the best truly two-way midfielder. By this structure giving him so much space, he can truly dominate. In fact, he ranks in the top 3 for Bayern Munich for the number of passes the team looks to play into a player, attempted passes, passes into the final third, progressive passes, touches, key passes, passes into the box, shot creating actions and goal creating actions per 90. So at times, teams will look to sit on Kimmich who can then often move laterally to the right to open up more space and we can see Goreska drop deeper to support as well, whilst Alaba can also look to push higher up on the left 
particularly if they're dominating possession. And after forming one of the best midfield duos with Thiago last season, Kimmich has formed one just as dominant with Leon Goretzka. Neither of them is playing a truly holding role, like a Busquets or a Fernandinho, where they would operate almost exclusively in this zone. Instead, both play with more fluidity, and yes, of the two, Kimmich tends to stay deeper, but we can also see the inverse to mix things up. When Bayern do attack through the centre, Müller and Lewandowski are an impressive duo. With men often supporting him between the lines, Müller is often able to find some space where he can look to play balls into the number 9. This is made easier by the fact Lewandowski has the strength to hold off a man, and his elusive movement means he often finds space without having to hold off a man. But as his career has progressed, Lewandowski has become more and more well-rounded. Now, we often see him drop deeper at times, and because he is such a threat, a centre-back often tries to stay tight, which creates space for runners in behind. But Bayern primarily like to attack through the flanks. On the left, when Coman starts, he plays more like a traditional winger, looking to attack the byline to get the crosses in, whilst combining with Alfonso Davis. Nabry, on the other hand, prefers to operate as an inside forward, so in these cases, Davis has much more offensive responsibility, providing most of the width, and Alaba having to move higher. And the Bayern front four show extreme fluidity, interchanging regularly. Down the right in particular, we see Müller and Sané often combine well. Pavard tends to stay deeper initially to allow Sané to have this one versus one, meaning that the opposition winger is caught higher up. So we often see these two interchange, and as Sané is such a threat, his fullback instinctively goes infield with him, whilst the defensive midfielder doesn't want to stray too far away from here because of Nabri and Goreska. So, Muller often has momentary space down the right which Bayern look to switch to, and he can then look for the cross. As a result, Muller does more crossing than Nabri or Sane. But when 1 vs 1 out wide, you can see Sane back his man into the box and then look for the shot after cutting in. But we also often see Pavard looking to arrive late to get a cross in. And one of Bayern's strengths is just how many numbers they commit into the box. This includes Lewandowski, Müller, as well as Goretzka and the far side winger. And this is where we see a difference between Goretzka and Kimmich once again. Kimmich tends to stay deeper to be a more creative force, looking for crosses from the half space or shots from the rebound, whilst Goretzka is more goal oriented. So, Kimmich attempts significantly more passes per game, has more key passes per game, but only Lewandowski, Nabri and Coman have more shots per game than Goretzka. As a result, no team attempts more crosses per game than the Bavarians, and they have almost twice as many headed goals as any other team. Let's shift onto the defensive end of things. The flooded box means that if the opposition stay deeper in the default shape, there will always be a man free in the box to get a header. So, the central midfielders naturally are dragged deeper into the box to defend, and this allows Bayern to counterpress efficiently. No team has a lower passes per defensive action than Bayern Munich in the league. This is because there will now be a large distance from the midfielder who wins the ball to the forward, so Bayern can easily swarm him. But this is also a major weakness for Bayern. Both of their pivots are usually high, as well as at least one fullback and often Alaba. So, if the first layer of pressing is broken, the opposition now have acres of space to run into. And this is a problem Flick is aware of, and when asked about his leaky defence he said, We've been talking about the reasons on why we concede so many goals. We said we need to control the centre and take care of the deep spaces behind the back row. And even in more settled situations, say from a goal kick, Bayern still look to press high, initially pushing up Goretzka alongside Müller to make a 4-1-4-1. As soon as the ball goes wide, Bayern will look to shut off all options. This again involves pushing the line up high early, so they can be vulnerable over the top. Alaba and Davis's pace, combined with the sweeper keeper, means they often deal with this, but it is still a big risk regardless. As a result, their defence isn't great, and they rank 5th best in goals against, and their expected goals is 6th best. Bayern Munich looks set to win the Bundesliga yet again, and despite an incredibly tough draw in Europe, will still fancy their chances. Flick has been impeccable since he came in, 
and though they have faced more adversity this season, these tactics mean they are still one of the best around. And if you want even more content, whilst helping to support the channel, consider checking out my Patreon at patreon.com slash footballmadesimple. You'll get early access to videos, exclusive videos, as well as access to the upcoming FMS video podcast. And a special thanks to Aaron AG for helping to support FMS on Patreon and making this video possible. But that's all for today and remember, keep it simple.